Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with Evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner. And today is a very special day <laughs> as is. we are concluding what has been a long, extensive journey through the book of Acts. I know, Dad, that I've loved walking through this amazing book of the Bible, a book of history, a book of the Holy Spirit, a book that outlines the work of the Holy Spirit through the lives of the apostles, as the book is called the Acts of the Apostles. And we have spent uh, <coughs> many, many episodes. Um, I believe this is our 74th really? episode <laughs> I didn't know. on the book of Acts. <laughs> That's awesome. And so we, um, if you've journeyed through this book with us, then... Uh, thank you, and and we pray that it has been a blessing to you, and that you certainly know more about this book than you did before. Well, you know, this is my personal favorite book of the Bible. Yeah, uh, because it's a book that's inspired me more than any other book, I guess, to mm. just go into all the world and preach the good news. And uh, Josh, when he was a teenager, he memorized this book every single word. Yeah, I think there are maybe over eleven hundred verses, or almost. Yeah, over a thousand. For yeah, sure. and uh, every when he was a teenager, he did that, and now I'm in the process of memorizing this book myself. I memorized the first 20 chapters, mm. and by God's grace, uh, I usually memorize one or two chapters on each crusade trip. So by God's Amazing. grace, um, I'll get through it too at some point. But uh, it's been a wonderful journey with all of you. And so today we will conclude with the last section of the book of Acts, which begins in verse 17. Dad, why don't you read for us verses 17 through 20? Gladly. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death, but... When the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had any charge to bring against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. Okay, so as a reminder, <clears throat> Paul is now in Rome. Yeah. He's under house arrest. Mm -hmm. Um, and he is able to entertain guests, uh, a great number of people. Absolutely. In fact, here he has the leaders of the Jews mm -hmm. who are in his house. Now remember... You know, he's not in Jerusalem, he's not in Israel, he's in Rome, but there are many Jews who have been displaced all over the world. Absolutely. Particularly all the way going back to work that Paul was doing <laughs> back in, before he was uh, Paul, when he was known as Saul, uh, that the persecution against the early Christians caused the Christians to yeah. leave Jerusalem. And of course, you would have also had many Jews. These these could be Christians. They could also be, uh, you know, mo these are Christians, but there would also be a, plent uh, a plethora of other non-Christian Jews, Orthodox Jews, living in Rome as well. So he has um, introduced sort of himself to them. This is why I'm here. I don't need to be here, but I appeal to Caesar. And now that I have... I am here, and I'm taking advantage of this time to talk to all of you. And the reason he appealed to Caesar, remember, friends, is because he wanted to preach Jesus to Caesar. That's right. To get Caesar saved. Yeah. And so that's the heart of Paul, and that's our hearts, too. And Amen. We want to encourage it to be your heart, too. Yes. And it says here that Paul says, it is because of the hope of Israel hmm. that I am bound with this chain. See, Paul is talking to these, these Jews, some of which would be Christians, some of which would not be Christians. And for those who are not, he's wanting to witness to them. Mm -hmm. He's wanting them to become Christians. Amen. And so he says, listen, the hope of Israel, what's the hope of Israel? It's the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so he says, this is the reason I'm actually enchained here in, is in Rome is because of the hope that we all have. And so they, are, they reply. Um, Dad, why don't you read verses 21 through 22? They replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of the brothers who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. Okay, so Paul himself is unknown to these people living in Rome, but Christianity is not. Right. And so um, they are interested to hear what Paul has to say, despite the fact that they've not heard anything 
uh, regarding Paul. And they say, hey, we have not heard anything bad about you either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to that effect, it's it's a good thing. Um, Dad, why don't you now read verses 23 through 25? They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. From morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. <coughs> the Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers when he said through Isaiah the prophet. Why don't you give the Isaiah quotation? Okay. Go to this people and say, you will never ever, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their ears, hear their eyes, hear with your, their ears and understand with their hearts and turn. And then I would heal them. Okay. So these guys start listening to Paul. And what does Paul do? Paul does what he has done on yeah. multiple occasions throughout the book of Acts. He did this when he went to the synagogue in Corinth in Acts 18. He did this when he talked in his first missionary journey in Pisidian Antioch back in chapter 13. Mm -hmm. He is talking to Jews using the scriptures. Yeah. And when we use the term scriptures, we are referring to the Old Testament. Absolutely. And that's what's here. The law of Moses and the prophets. That's mm -hmm. a term that we use to describe the Old Testament. Right. And... What is he trying to do? He's trying to convince them about Jesus mm -hmm. from those things. And, and what's the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Well, the kingdom of God is how we are rescued from hell and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is telling people that life begins, eternal life begins here on earth when you start a relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, it also, he's telling them how to be saved, to repent Absolutely. and believe the gospel. Absolutely. And this is a large group of people he's talking to. It says in verse 23, they came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying from morning till evening. Yeah. He explained, uh, you know, yeah. sometimes in the Western world, we can get so um, bored so quickly and we can become so antsy so right. easily. And yet, you know, Dad, when we go to these places in other countries, mm -hmm. oftentimes the people are so hungry for the scriptures. Sure is they, true. They will preach for three, four hours at a time, and they want more. Amen. You know? And, um, Amen. And, and this is the hunger that we see here. And Paul, so gifted that he's able to, from morning till evening, mm -hmm. just teach the scriptures, proving Jesus as Messiah, initiating the kingdom of God, talking Amen. about the ministry, the life, and the teachings of Jesus. Uh, it just must have been a wonderful thing to be able to sit and listen to. Amen. Uh, and look at this verse, Josh, and everyone. Verse 24. Some were convinced mm -hmm. by what he said, but others would not believe. You know, just this morning, I, we got some new stats sent in by our crusade directors telling us how many people got saved at crusades right. recently. Right. And through our media ministry. And so I updated the, the numbers. I've been keeping track of these numbers, like, fruit, the, diligently for yes, over 20 have. years. Yes, 48%, 48% of people who attend our crusades in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, yeah. historically over 20 years, have made public commitments to Christ. 48%. Incredible. And of course, that's much, much, much higher than we would see in, in Western nations. Yes, but yes. why is that? It's yeah. because these people are spiritually hungry. Right. This is a, these are nations that are, have been spiritually starved for the gospel. They don't know about Jesus. Yeah. They want Jesus. They've been waiting their whole lives for spiritual truth. And so they're eager to be saved. Yes. But so, so when we hear the, so that's almost half. Right. So when we hear about that some in verse 24 were convinced by what he said, but others wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We don't know the percentage for sure. Right. But some did and some didn't. Yep. Just like in Jesus' day. Some did, some didn't. Do, do <clears throat> you and I get concerned that 52% of the people there didn't, on the spot, that night, make commitments right. to Christ? Right. No, we don't. Right. Because, first of all, the percentage is already very high. We also know that seeds were sown. Yes. And so many times down the road, those people get saved later. But uh, let's understand this, folks. You cannot get discouraged if not everyone gets saved no. when you speak to them about Jesus. No, you can't. You can't because not even Jesus did saw no, that fruit. Of course. Not even the Apostle Paul. Some did, some didn't. We don't. No. But still, you keep on preaching, you keep on praying, you keep on working to try to help them come to know the Lord. And, you know, 
I mean, we don't save anyone. The Holy Spirit's the one to present. So we present the gospel. Yeah, and then you leave, you leave the results up to the Lord. That's right. And um, and it says that the issue, you know, they disagreed among themselves. Yeah. After Paul spoke about how their forefathers. Yeah. Uh, these are prophetic words that were uttered by the prophet Isaiah regarding the people really who killed Jesus. Right. That's right. And so... You know, he Isaiah said that they would come when the, the the forefathers of Israel, when the leaders of Israel would deny and hmm. reject the Messiah. And that they would be ever hearing but never understanding, they'd be ever seeing but never right. perceiving, their hearts would be calloused. They would and, and basically what he's saying is, you know, the, the leaders of the faith rejected Jesus as Messiah. I mean, it might even remind some of you of Acts chapter 7 when Stephen gave his speech before the Sanhedrin and he says, yes. you know, um, our fathers persecuted all the prophets. That's right. That's right. You know? It's nothing new. It, it's nothing new. Yeah. It's, it's more shocking, really, yeah. if, if we don't get persecuted yes. on the spot. Yes. And so, um, and this, you know, rubs some of them the wrong way. Mm -hmm. and, and it is because of this pride within the Jewish people. And this, of course, is not exclusive or exhaustive. Absolutely. Um, but, but because of this pride at times that we see presented here, this is why, uh, you know, Paul says what he does in verse 28, which it says, therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. And, and obviously that's true. Uh, in the early years of Christianity in Acts chapter six, we remember what it says, a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Yep. This is in the infancy of Christianity. Right. Uh, so many Jews did get saved at the beginning. Of course, many didn't. But we're looking forward now. And there's been a trickle of, of Jews recognized Jesus as Messiah for, for th you know, thousands of years. Yep. But we're looking forward to the day that Paul tells us in Romans and that Revelation reminds us about when there's going to be a great end time harvest of the Jewish people. Amen. We're looking forward to that. The Jewish people are going to be around till the very end and multitudes of Jewish people are going to get saved uh, at the end and recognize Jesus as Messiah. It's going to be awesome. And in the meantime, we just keep preaching. Yeah. And, and that, you know, for what was a, a long time in human history, the Jews had this preferential treatment from the Lord and they still do. We see that today. Sure. That God continues yes. to protect the people mm -hmm. of Israel. Absolutely. But, what we see in the new covenant is that the division all along, which is that Jesus would come as a savior for all people. Absolutely. And that the descendant of Abraham, you know, what did God promise to Abraham? I will bless you and all the nations of the earth mm -hmm. will be blessed because of you. It was never just about the Jews. It was always about all mankind. And, <clears throat> and what we see here is Paul is saying, listen, you guys, Jesus came to you first. But if you don't want to receive, man, the Gentiles are lining up. Look, They're ready. Paul rightly understood that he needed to preach salvation to the Jews and the Gentiles. That's right. In other words, we do the same thing. Everybody. Like every, we, we need to do the same thing. We That's can't right. think that the Jews don't need to repent and believe in Jesus That's and they'll right. be saved. That's right. That's not what Paul thought. And it's not what we think either. That's we right. just imitate Paul as he imitates Christ. And 100%. so we preach to Jew and Gentile alike. Yeah. And we and many believe and some don't, but yeah. we keep preaching. Dad, why don't you read now the final two verses of this book? This feels feels interesting to do this. Let's take these last two verses. Or three verses. Yeah, two. Three. For two whole years. Therefore, I want... Oh, yeah, we, oh, yeah, I already did that For one. two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house, welcomed all who came to see him, boldly and without hindrance... He preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Powerful. <laughs> okay, Powerful. look at this. Here's, here's what was going on. We've already talked about how Paul's under house arrest. Yep. Okay. Paul would have had daily revivals in, his, uh, in the house that he had rented. Yes. So here's Paul. He's... Presumably, his, uh, you know, people who loved him and cared for him, they were giving offerings that he could pay for a rented house. He's under house arrest. He can't leave. Yeah. But, he's, uh, but for two years, he preached, it says, boldly and without hindrance. Right. He had favor with the Roman officials. He could preach whatever he want, yeah. wanted, and he did boldly. And he did. And the way I look at it, Josh, is this. In the mornings... 
In the afternoons, he taught the word of God and in the eat to the believers and the inquirers. And in the evenings, he had revival meetings where he preached the, uh, the salvation message. And I could see that happening for him. It's what we do at our crusades. Yeah. During the day, we preach to the pastors and the Christian leaders. Yeah. We build them up in the word of God, the believers. We prepare them to take care of the harvest that's going to come in the evening is when we have our evening crusades for the unbelievers. Yes. And I tell you, because of places that we preached in, like we're with revivals, like in Cuba, like in Egypt, yeah. places where we can't have big public meetings yet. Yeah. We have these revivals in the churches. Yes. Powerful and guess things. what? I tell you, it's the same thing. During the day, we preach to the believers. In the evening, we preach to uh, the unbelievers. And God does the work and he builds his church. It's an incredible thing to think about Paul doing that for two years. For two years. And boldly and without hindrance. Mm. So like, you know, it's just, it's amazing. It's He's under house arrest. He's got guards occasionally that would be there if not uh you know all the time and yet he's preaching boldly he doesn't care he's preaching without hindrance nobody's stopping him and it says all he welcomed all who came to see yeah. him he's got he's got believers and unbelievers he's got the educated and the uneducated he's got jews and gentiles oh. he's got all types of people coming to the house and they're getting just like you said they're learning the scriptures they're being brought into the faith they're being healed and Amen. delivered uh it, it would just be a constant revival <laughs> happening in his own rented house under Roman rule. So I ask you, what is stopping you from doing something similar Amen. to this? Here's Amen. Paul. He's under house arrest. He's in the most hostile government in the whole world against Christianity. Yeah. And, and yet you, may, if you're living in the Western world at least, uh, you're not under house arrest for your faith, probably. Yeah. And you're living in a relatively non-hostile environment. Right. So what's stopping you from doing the Amen. same thing? Amen. It's Why great... don't you start doing that? And you know, Dad, that segues well into this, which is that the book of Acts doesn't end in the traditional sense, hmm. in the way that a lot of the books of the Bible do, with some sort of finality. It's rather open-ended. Absolutely. We don't see the death of Paul. No. Um, we, of course, know that that after these two years, Paul did, um, we believe, stand before Caesar, yeah. preach the gospel mm -hmm. to him, and eventually he was killed for his faith. He was he, beheaded that's right. uh, in Rome yeah. um, by, C uh, by the command of Caesar. But you know, Luke intentionally, I think, leaves that absent from this mm -hmm. story because the Acts of the Apostles is not finished with Acts 28. We are writing, Josh, myself, and you, each one of you listening and watching, we are all writing Acts chapter 29. That's right. We've been living in it for now for, for uh, almost 2,000 years. Yep. And, and it is intentionally um, left open-ended because of that, that we are all to be part of that story, that you and I are involved in the acts of the apostles. We are the disciples of Jesus here on earth today. And God, as he worked through the apostle Peter, as he worked through the apostle Paul, as he worked through the many men and women that we see in the book of Acts, God is still working today. He wants to work in you. He wants to work through you to reach this world, Jews and Gentiles, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you, uh, you know, just to be, to be like Peter to be like Paul, ultimately to be like Jesus, imitate them as they imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. Josh and I have purpose in our hearts that we wanna make our lives count for Jesus Amen. as much as possible. Amen. By God's grace, that's what we're trying to do. I wanna encourage you to do the same, we both do. Uh, you've, you've gone through Acts with us. Yeah. This is the most transformative book, I believe, in the whole Bible. And so it's the most transformative book ever written. Let these words and these messages transform you from the inside. Amen. And um, I've, I started preaching when I was a pastor decades ago yeah. on the book of Acts. And, yeah. and at some point along the line, I feel like I've preached myself into the book of Acts. <laughs> and my family too. Mm. And it's like, I didn't start off that way. But when you let enough of the book of Acts get inside of you, it changes you amen amen so there you go go out and do it go right out. acts 29 today that's right and and let um 
you know, what's what you've seen in the word here be, uh, you know, evident in your own life. Let it be part of your life. Let you be empowered by his Holy Spirit to do the great work of the Great Commission in the world in which God has placed you. Uh, that is Acts 1 through 28, <laughs> verse by verse with Dr. Wagner and myself <laughs> walking you through the scriptures. We pray it's been a blessing to you as it is for us as well. And that is what's in the Word.